G'day, John for the hot end. Today we're going to take a look at the G Tech E180. Today we're having a look at the G Tech E180. It's uh, a machine that was sent to us by Banggood. It's got a build volume of 130 by 130 by 130, which uh, is quite small. And as you know, probably from my other reviews, I'm not a big fan of small printers, but some people obviously are. So this is the machine. Now it comes pre-assembled. It's ready to go straight out of the box. You just have to, uh, to plug it in and, and uh, follow the instructions on the quick start guide and you're off and running. Now it is sold with uh, some interesting features. Now it is the brake resuming capability. So in other words, I'm assuming that means a power fail. Uh, 3.2 inch color touch screen, five point leveling, uh, safe durable nozzle design and cloud based uh, easy print uh, 3D via Wi-Fi and uh, an app. Now to say that I had problems with this printer to start with would be an understatement. Um, the first thing I did, out of the box they give you a filament holder. Uh, the screws that they give you to put the filament holder together were uh, too short and the holes didn't line up very well so uh, I couldn't put it together with the screws provided so I had to put my own screws in and assemble that. Okay, then we got to putting the printer out on the bench and the bed was off its runners. So I tilted the bed and put it back onto its runners and you will see via this video, I hope you can see the bed moving around because the, the runners, two of the runners had large broken parts on them causing flat spots, which meant that when the bed went backwards and forwards, there was a distinct clunk, clunk, clunk. Okay, so uh, I didn't have any wheels to fit it, so uh, that had to stay. I just shuffled them around um, turned them upside down, moved them around and got it as best I could. So that was uh, another problem that I had. The next problem I had, uh, which you will see in this video, is I kept getting temperature errors. Now it's marketed as a unique design and there it is there. You can see that it's a proprietary, proprietary nozzle uh, specific to this machine. It's marketed as ceramic and it has uh, electrical contacts. So it's uh, the thermistor and everything is built into this unit. It's a simple button on the extruder, uh, on the hot end, sorry, uh, pops it out and you just pop that back in and clip it in. Fortunately, they sent a spare with the machine. So I took the one that was out one that was in it out and put the spare in and at least I could get the machine to start printing. The SD card that came with it, the micro SD card, according to the quick start, I think it was, um, where are we? Yes, according to the quick start guide, it says choose the test file GTEC for printing, click the button print to start printing. Well, I didn't have a file marked GTEC. Um, there was one uh, G-code file on the card which was called, I think from memory, 464 or 484, something like that. Uh, and I went through the quick start guide, did everything that it told me to do, which was insert the card, click the printing to choose the file, uh, and, and then it says embark on your 3D printing journey. Well, we didn't embark. Uh, the file didn't work, it just sat there and it didn't do anything. Hmm, I says to myself, we best uh, get another file, see if that works. 
So before I could do that, I had to download the, uh, the Slicer program, which they recommend, which was the, um, what was it called? It was called the uh, Easy Print 3D, Easy Print 3D software. Now you'll see a couple of photos of um, screen prints of the Easy 3 software. Uh, so I imported a model into the software, um, had a look around, uh, you'll see on the left and on the top there's some, um, some menu buttons, had a look there, didn't say anything about um, s selecting printers or anything, so I didn't worry about that. Brought in a model, sliced it, put it onto the SD card and whacked it in the machine, went through the process to print and it didn't work. Hello, computer. Just use the keyboard. The, the printer um, had a temperature area error again. So um, I went back to my quick start guide and it says to, uh, when you're inserting the filaments, uh, to switch on the heater and preheat the nozzle and then extrude some filament. So I thought, all right, maybe I've got to manually preheat it. So I did that, uh, got the filament extruding fine and uh, hit print again and it started to print in the home position up here, not down on the bed. So I thought to myself, hmm, something's wrong here again. Perhaps I've got to put the Wi-Fi on. So they send you a Wi-Fi, which is this thing here, it's called a 3D Wi-Fi from G-Tech, that's it there. So I then proceeded to try and install the uh, Wi-Fi and the, uh, the app that goes with the, uh, the software. I think it was probably about three hours later, I decided I'd better look for a manual. So I did that, and you'll see a link in the description to the manual, which I finally found on a wiki on a support group for GTEC somewhere. And I found a GTEC 3D printer E180 user manual, which is, uh, where are we, 65 pages long. So I figure I'll read the manual for this one, uh, which I very rarely do and noted that the setting up of the Wi-Fi and the uh, cloud storage and the app takes up around 40 pages of the 60 page manual. So off I went and embarked on that. Um, I found the app, downloaded the app and then you had to register on the app, which I did. I uh, put in my details and hit register and it said a confirmation email will be sent to you to register the app. Well, it's now like four or five days later and I still haven't received a confirmation email so I couldn't get the app working. And there was no way I could get the Wi-Fi to work. I'm, I'm not a Wi-Fi expert. I don't know a lot about Wi-Fi so maybe it was me. But I do know that uh, other people have done reviews on this printer and they've also had lots of trouble with the Wi-Fi. I have yet to see it actually working from anybody. And I'm the same. I could not get the Wi-Fi to work. Okay, so at this point I stopped. Uh, this is after some five or six hours of playing with this printer and went to bed. Uh. The next day, I thought, well, I better have another go at this thing. So I went into Simplify 3D and I made a profile for it. And I sliced um, our friend, the Lucky Cat, in Simplify 3D and set it up again, preheated it and hit print. And I actually got a print, which I was quite happy about. It's not a great print, but at least it was a print. Now, I went through the bed leveling process before I started that print, uh, which is on the menu. And it's a five point bed leveling program. And it says 
that um, you go to, uh, it takes you to point one and it homes to the first point. And you put paper in and there's an up and down arrow that you supposedly adjust the Z height uh, to level the bed. So I, I did all of that and uh, couldn't get the bed level. No matter what I tried, I could not get the bed level. I go back to, the, to point one after doing three, four and five and it was out again. So I thought, ah, I'll go back to the manual and see what the manual says. And sure enough, in the manual, it says, uh, yes, there's a five point uh, auto bed leveling system, but what you need to do is do point five, which is the center of the bed uh, with the piece of paper and the up and down arrows, which I did. And then to do one, two, three, and four, which is the corners, you should use the springs and screws. That made sense to me, so I did that and finally got a level bed to print on. So it was confusing to say the least. Okay, so I got a print. I then printed a 40 millimeter cube, which has, you probably can't see, but I'll take some photos, uh, some diagonal artifacts, which uh, I'm assuming are from the lumpy bed rollers. And then I went to print the cat. And I figured, well, this is no good. I must, uh, I should try and get their slicer working. There's obviously a problem. When you first turn on the slicer, as you'll see from the photos, it says that there's an update and the slicer is a beta version. You click on the update and nothing happens. It doesn't link you anywhere and there is no update. I have heard later that if you talk to GTEC, they will give you the update file, but it's not public anywhere. So, I uh, had another go, had another look at the slicer, and I found right up the very top, uh, in the minor menu at the top, was a thing that said printer. Ah, so I click on that, and sure enough, there's a heap of printers listed, of which the E80 was, E180 was one of them. So I figured that's where I'd gone wrong using the slicer. So I clicked on the, uh, the correct printer. Then I imported uh, some files and sliced it again, which, um, yeah, the slicer worked. It was fairly, fairly basic, but it worked. So I sliced the cat again using their profile and their, their starting scripts and ending scripts and everything, and uh, decided to start print on the cat again, which I did, and I got those. You will see that that's as far as the print went. Um, it stopped with a temperature er error again. So I still haven't figured out that one as to why it did that, why it stopped with a temperature error. Um, I think from memory I was trying to print at 195, which I have seen on other printers that some don't like to print below 200. So I'm guessing that's what it is with this as well. So I re-sliced it at, uh, at 200 and got a print, which was this one. Now I'll put some photos up, there's a couple of dags on there, but generally yeah, it's, it's, it's not too bad. It's not too bad a print. I wouldn't say it's a great print, but it's acceptable. It's an acceptable print. So then I printed my favorite boat, this one, um, again using their slicer and their settings. And this one actually came out nice. Um, it's not perfect. Um, it's got a couple of little problems on it, but it, it came out acceptably well. So I'd have to say, that after a lot of time and effort, uh, I did get an acceptable print out of this printer. There was one other thing that I wanted to test and that was the power fail restart feature, which you'll see in this clip. Uh, I unplugged the power, plugged the power back in and it didn't work. It went to a uh, screen which had the the play resume print button which i touched it it uh, preheated the extruder but only to one degree less than it was supposed to be 
and sat there and never restarted. I waited for some half an hour in case it was a software glitch, but no, the power fail feature did not work. In summary, this printer is, um, I would say, a work in progress from GTEC. I think they have a lot of work to do with their software for their Wi-Fi. They have a lot of work to do with the app and trying to get that to work. They have a lot of work to do with the firmware of the printer. But the, the mechanics of the printer and the build of the printer uh, seem fine. I, I do think that the actual printer itself, even though it's plastic, uh, it does have metal rods and things inside, uh, the printer itself is capable of doing a nice print. It's the, the software and the firmware which are the problem on this printer. As I said, I did get it to work, so I'd have to say that uh, it's a printer that, that um, I would give, yeah, it's a hard one. Software, firmware wise, um, one or two out of 10, really. The printer itself and the mechanics and, and the build of it and the quality of it, um, yeah, it's not too bad. I'd give it a five, yeah, five out of 10, uh, even though it had the damaged rollers. Um, but would I recommend you buy one? Well, no, not at this stage. I would wait until GE Tech sort out these problems with the software and the firmware. Um, disappointing, but I won't be uh, hanging on to this printer. This one, uh, I'm afraid I can't even give to anyone because the, the thing just doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So I think this one will be consigned to a back shelf somewhere and gathering dust. Okay, I hope this is, uh, has helped you uh, with a look at the GTEC E180 and we'll catch you on the next video.